before I answer the question, that is the title of this video, I want you to do this. Find the percent composition of these two compounds. This one's acetic acid, the acetate ion with hydrogen in front. This one is glucose, C6H12O6, it's sugar. Find the percent composition. Notice that they're made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, both of them. Hydrogen is the same as there, so you'll have three percentages for each of these compounds. So go ahead and find the percent composition. You do that, pause the video, and then when you're done, we'll continue. So now you should have found that. Uh, you should have done it on your own. And so now we'll show what you would have done. Aha, caught you again. You were trying to skip that part where you didn't have to do work, but do the work. Work it out. Figure it out. Follow your steps. Um, not these steps. Um, the different steps. Uh, molar mass steps. So we're using the molar masses to find percent composition. So go ahead and do that. Um, in case you were lost. Yeah, that's what we're doing is molar mass um, to find percent composition. So you'll have percent carbon, you'll have percent hydrogen, you'll have percent oxygen. Pause the video. Okay, so now that you've done that, the percent carb... I can't believe you thought I would be fooled. Do the problem. I'm not fooled. You, I'm not fooled by you. Do the problem. I know you're trying to get to the part where you go through. It's just going to be easier for all of us. Like, there are people who did the problem the first time I asked, and they're like, oh, God, why is this person not doing the problem? They're ruining the experience for all of us. I just cannot even with this person right now even. So please don't be the even, even person where we can't even deal with you even. Please just, just do it. Just do it. Okay. All right. Well, if that didn't work, then I don't know what will. So here's what you should have found. Something very interesting. These two compounds have the same percent composition, even though they're exactly, no, even though they're different compounds. They have the exact same composition. You should have gotten 39.99% carbon. You should have gotten 6.73, with some big differences maybe, percent hydrogen, and 53.28, 53.28% oxygen. Both of these compounds have the same percent composition. So what is going on here? And now it's time to freaking answer the question, why have I been writing this in red the whole time? And I'm putting a little star. Why have I been doing that? It's because I've been lying to you. This does not give you the formula for the compound. It gives you something a little bit different. It's not actually the formula. It is giving you the empirical formula. Empirical formula. An empirical formula is not quite a formula. It gives similar information. Specifically, an empirical formula is the lowest whole number, hmm, number ratio of elements in a compound. That is what an empirical formula is. It is not what I will be calling a molecular formula. A molecular formula, molecular formula, is the total number of all atoms in a compound of different elements in a compound of elements in a compound so the total number of all atoms of all the elements in a compound there's a very slight difference there the difference is that an empirical formula only gives you the lowest whole number ratio well look what we're doing in this step we're trying to get something in a small low whole number ratio that is what these steps will give us up through step four, at this point, who liked that? A little marker squeal? Some people just died. <laughs> this only gives you an empirical formula, but it doesn't give us the molecular formula. You need one more step to figure out if you've been given the molecular formula. Let me show you what I mean. HC2H3O2, well, this is four hydrogens, yes. So we have two carbons, four hydrogens, and two oxygens. So I'm just gonna rewrite this like this. We don't normally write this like this, but you can see that we have that. And two, four, and two, 
those are all divisible by 2. So the lowest whole number ratio is actually CH2O, C1H2O1. That is the empirical formula for acetic acid. Look at it for glucose, C6H12O6. Well, all of those numbers are divisible by 6. And if we did, we'd get the same empirical formula. And that is why they have the percent composition. Compounds with the same empirical formula have the same percent composition. Gee, that sounded important. Let me say that again so you can write that down. Compounds with the same empirical formula have the same percent composition. So there's lots of different examples of compounds that have the same empirical formula. Um, for example, uh, there's, lots of, there's lots of examples, he says, and has no examples on hand. So I'm just gonna I'm just, I'm just gonna I'm just I'm just gonna make one up. Let's say C C let's say uh, uh, C two H four. Boom, got it, nailed it, crushed it. C two H four. That's a compound. So the structure looks like this. Cool. C two H four. That's a compound. A different compound could be C3H6. This compound would look like this. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Very different compounds, similar things going on in them, hydrogens and carbons and all that. But the formulas are different. But notice what's not different, the empirical formula. Two and four divided by two gives me CH2. Three and six divided by three gives me CH2. These have the same empirical formula, even though they're different compounds. Acetic acid is vinegar, glucose is sugar. One of them you want in your cookies, one of them you don't. You put vinegar in cookies? You put vanilla in cookies? Obviously, if you've learned anything in chemistry class, it's that I do not cook or bake. So that's your main takeaway. Anyway, so that's what it means to be an empirical formula. Um, it's the lowest whole number ratio. And it doesn't tell us. We can go to the empirical, but we can't go backwards. Look at the difference between these two compounds, or the difference between these two compounds. There is one thing that will distinguish between these two compounds, and that is the molar mass. So, for our last step, we need to compare molar mass to empirical formula. That is our last step. Let me show you how that will work. And I'll show you that by showing you an entire example. Got these definitions? Good. They're gone. Everything is gone except for this percent composition. So here's a percent composition. And I might say, and I don't tell you the formula, and I might say, find the molecular formula for this compound. And you would do all these steps up through four, and you'd have an empirical formula. I'm about to work it out. But you wouldn't be able to find the molecular formula. So here's how I would tell it to you, the question, so you could find it. A compound has 39.99% carbon, 6.73% hydrogen, and 53.28% oxygen by mass. That is the percent composition of this compound. And the compound has a molar mass of 180.18 grams per mole. Calculate the molecular formula. Now we have something that will help us distinguish between different compounds with the same empirical formula. Once I have the empirical formula, I'll know what I should scale it up by, by looking at how massive, what the mass of this compound should be. So if you want, take a second and work backwards. Take this percent composition, find the, what we now know to be the empirical formula. I'm actually not gonna pause for very long, but you can do that if you want. Find the empirical formula, steps one through four. I'm gonna fly through it now. So you should have, 39.99 grams now of carbon, 6.73 grams of hydrogen, 53.28 grams 
oxygen, goes all that up to 100, so we know step zero is good. We changed our percentages to grams, so step one is done. Step two is to divide by molar mass to get to moles. We divide by 12.01 grams per mole. We divide by 1.01 grams per mole. And we divide by 16.00 grams per mole. And we get 39.9. I don't know why I never worked this part out. I should always work this out. 3.3. Shouldn't matter, but that many moles of carbon. Uh, 6.66 6 moles hydrogen and 3.33 moles of oxygen. Cool, so now we have moles. Step two is done. We just divided by molar mass to get to moles. Step three, we need to get over something to one ratio. So we'll divide by the smallest number, which is in this case, 3.33. This division is gonna be real nice, which means we won't have to do step four, by the way. We don't have to multiply to get a whole number because we'll have whole numbers. One carbon, two hydrogens, one oxygen. Oh, well, this isn't unexpected because we found this empirical formula earlier when we were comparing our two identical percent composition compounds. My, my empirical formula, and mm, I'm sticking with red. The theme is red. The empirical formula is red. And red is the empirical formula, and it is CH2O. Okay, so we're, we've gotten the empirical formula, and that's as far as we've gotten so far. But I want to know what the real formula is. How many carbons are there? I know it's a one to two to one ratio, carbon to hydrogen to oxygen, but how many are there really? And to do that, we need to compare to the molar mass. The molar mass of this compound is 180.18. Well, what's the molar mass of this compound? Let's figure out what that is. In fact, I'll call it the empirical molar mass. The empirical molar mass is just the molar mass of this guy, CH2O. 12 plus two plus 16 should give you 30.03 grams per mole. I think you can do molar mass. Check me if you think I'm wrong, but 30.03 grams per mole is the molar mass of this empirical formula. Now, this is what we do. Just compare these two numbers. You can do it qualitatively. You might be able to see how much bigger this is, but if you like, I'll give you a formula. You don't need the formula though. Take the molecular molar mass in fact, I'll put that in blue so it matches. Take the molecular molar mass. Some people are having an aneurysm because I've written that blue over that green there. <laughs> no one can tell me what to do. It's my whiteboard. Divided by the empirical molar mass that we just calculated. Okay. So this is just a ratio. This is literally just division. This is going to be 180.18 over this one, 30.03. And hopefully you saw the numbers are pretty nice. This is going to give you six. What that number means, that's how many times you need to multiply everything in this compound by. Just like when we do it here to multiply to get a whole number, we multiply everything by two. Or in a balanced equation where we need to cancel out seven halves of two, we multiply everything by two. We're gonna do the same thing here, except this case, we need to multiply it by six. So one times six is six, so C6. Two times six is 12, so H12. And O times six is six. One times six is six. And what do you know? There's one of our formulas that we started with. This is glucose. Um, and we knew that it was gonna have this percent composition, and we were able to find its empirical formula but without knowing the molar mass, we had no way to know how to get to the molecular formula or how to interpret that this was indeed the molecular formula. So that's why you need this last bit of information to figure out what the real molecular formula is. Now, to be fair, most of the questions are gonna be using just these three steps, maybe that one, um, where you won't have these wacky numbers and you won't have to do this very last step. Uh, but 
for those of you who want all the bonus points, and for those of you who want the 100s on the test, uh, then this is information that you should be able to do. So there's going to be lots of practice problems. There's, I've got a ton of these types of problems. These are one of my favorite types of problems to do. Um, and I'll send those out. Um, and you'll have, what's today, Wednesday? You'll have tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday to practice all of these. And we'll review on Monday. But that's all I got for this unit. Lots of stuff there. I don't know why I'm racing. I should start the video. Goodbye. See you next unit. Oh, it was only 15 minutes. Nice.